Hi again, everybody, and um, welcome to the next uh, Yule and Kyle podcast. Uh, I'm with Denise Loney uh, once again, and I would like to introduce the subject of statutory demands. Um, Denise, what is a statutory demand? So, Stephen, it's a, it's a formal um, demand that served under um, a couple of different types of legislation, if I can put it like that. Um, one that served um, on limited companies and the other that served on individuals, uh, sole traders and partnership. Now, the statutory demand is, a, is, a, is a, as I said already, a formal demand requiring payment of the sums outstanding um, within 21 days if, if it's served under the the either relevant pieces of legislation. We'll maybe come on and talk about the short form demands at, at a later point. Um, it's a, a, a say, it's a, it's, it's a statutory demand. We um, prepare it and it is then um, served by sheriff officers and, and we've talked about them previously. Um, and it's, it's designed to be um, in the right circumstances uh, a quicker way to try and get your cash. And sometimes uh, the formality of having sheriff officers turn up at your door with this formal demand can be very effective. Denise, are there any financial limits involved? Um, yes, there are. Um, so for limited companies, um, the debt outstanding has to be at least £750. So it's a relatively low sum. Um, for individuals, um, whether that's you know, individuals, sole traders or partners, then the, the limit currently is, is £5,000. So you've said that, or maybe imply that you can use a statutory demand as an alternative to litigation. Can you use that after litigation? Yes, you can. You can, you can use it at, at any stage, although I'm not sure why you would want to use it after litigation, once you have a, a decision or a decree, because you're then um, able to look at in, uh, insolvency routes at that point in any event. Are there any, are there any circumstances that you wouldn't use a demand? We are not particularly keen on them um, in relation to individuals. And the reason for that is, is simply that once the demand is served on the individual, all they have to do is complete a little slip that says the debt is denied. Um, and even the, 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 the debtor can do that, complete that slip, can complete that slip, send it back, even where we all know there is no basis for disputing the debt. And perhaps it's a subject for another podcast, Stephen, but I've actually tried to test that through the courts where um, the debtor had previously admitted on oath in the course of giving evidence that certain sums were due. Post the service of a statutory demand, the debtor said that the debt was in dispute. Yeah, um, I've actually had a very similar experience. Oh, you? <laughs> and you're absolutely <laughs> correct uh, on that. Um, the Maybe... I should point out to our English uh, listeners that I do believe that in England um, a simple denial uh, would be insufficient um, to prevent a bankruptcy petition following service of a statutory demand. Uh, so there is a difference between Scotland and in England there. But I, uh, what, what Denise has said is, is, is absolutely 100% correct. Um, that being the case, I think looking at a limited company, would you use a, lim a statutory demand if you suspected there was a genuine dispute? No, generally speaking, not. And, and it's something that we would always um, check with clients before we go ahead and issue the demand. But it, because if there's if there's a whisper of a dispute and any kind of valid basis for that is a waste of money, frankly, um, serving the, the demand. Do you also think that it could be seen as an abuse of the court process if you were to found a limitation so. petition? Yes. I yes. mean, yeah, 
I'm sorry for labouring that, Denise, but I have been in a situation where I was instructed by an English solicitor um, that following uh, a genuine dispute uh, being having arisen um, following service of a statutory demand that he basically insisted uh, that we proceed with a liquidation petition, and it was something I wasn't prepared to do um, because the sheriff, um, the judge in the sheriff court, who is the sheriff, uh, could award uh, the expenses against the solicitor personally in those um, circumstances. Yeah. Stephen, I think what we always have to remember in Scotland is that we are officers of the court, and actually our obligations as officers of the court trump our obligations to our clients. Yes, I, that actually is very well encapsulated and explained. Um, I think perhaps you've already explained how the demand has to be served. It is by uh, sheriff officers. Yeah. yeah. I was once encouraged by another lawyer. It doesn't actually say for limited companies that sheriff officers. It just says officer of a court. And I was encouraged. I think my leg was being pulled by another lawyer that a solicitor being an officer of the court, you can serve the statutory demand, which I did try to do. But that's another story. It was a ridiculous thing for me to even <laughs> attempt. Yes. So don't try it at home. Um, that's what I would say. So what happens, Denise, if the debtor simply ignores the demand? So once it's been served, if, the, if there's no response at all, then once the demand has expired, uh, we are in a position to proceed with either bankruptcy or sequestration if it's um, individuals that are involved or liquidation in the case of limited companies. Again, a short, succinct answer, and I will advise our listeners you'll be pleased to know that we will be looking at liquidation and bankruptcy um, later on. But these are um, two quite uh, draconian actions that can take place after um, the service of the demand. Now, the whole purpose of debt recovery is to try to get the debt paid, of course. Um, and we may be fortunate that the debtor actually settles the debt in response to the demand or they may make an offer to settle the debt. So it's a very broad question I'm going to ask you, Denise, but what are the circumstances, or in what circumstances would you accept a debtor's offer to settle? Well, well I suppose the obvious first answer to that is if, if it's a reasonable um, offer. But, but I guess beyond that, we would look quite closely at any information that either we have or the sheriff officers have been able to give us or indeed the client may have as to the, the, the trading situation of the, the, the debtor. Quite often when we serve statutory demands having identified suitable cases, um, we, we, we suspect that the company is in a bit of financial difficulty that, uh, or the individual is. And by serving the statutory demand, what we hope to do is move our client's debt up to the top of the pile, um, where we know the, the debtor or debtor business is, is juggling financials and, and struggling to pay everyone. Um, so in that kind of scenario, if, if we get a reasonable offer, then um, we would often recommend to the clients that they accept it. Clearly, it's the client's decision. Ultimately, they need to give us their instructions one way or the other. But as I say, if we've got intelligence that suggests that the company or the business or the individual is, is struggling, then a reasonable offer where payment is going to be made quickly. And that's also important, not payments that are going to be made over nine months when, you know, who knows where we might all be in nine months. Um, so in those in, in those circumstances, we would usually recommend um, that payment is accepted or, or that, you know, the, the, the offer is accepted. Yeah, I think that's sound advice. Uh, and I suppose to an extent following on from that, what options does the debtor have if they dispute the debt? So it, it, if they dispute the debt, then it's a question, uh, as I think I mentioned earlier, that they have to respond to the statutory demand to say that the debt is in dispute. Now, from that point, 
whether it's an individual or a partnership or a limited company, that really stops us in our tracks. Um, we cannot go um, we cannot go forward in terms of looking at bankruptcy or liquidation. So at that point, we would need to clearly report to our clients that we've had intimation that the debt's in dispute, however reasonable or, or otherwise that um, dispute is. And we would then generally have to um, look at raising normal court action, whether under ordinary procedure or under simple procedure. OK, thanks for that. And finally, you did mention a three day winding up notice. What's that? So that's a, a short form um, demand, uh, as we refer to it, where um, in circumstances, again, where we think that the, the company and, and, it, and it's only um, usable against limited companies, we can't use it for um, individuals um, because it's set out, it's allowed under the insolvency um, legislation. So it's a short form demand served by sheriff officers um, similar to normal statutory demands, and it just gives um, a, a three day period for making payment. Um, and again, in the situation that I described earlier, where we, we perhaps know that the company's struggling and that they're they're they're, they're paying their, um, their their creditors who are shouting loudest, if you like, it's just a way of getting attention. Because whereas the normal statutory demand has a period of um, notice to run of 21 days, this is considerably shorter. So it can be very effective in the right circumstances. OK, can I be permitted to just um, for a commercial or permitted time for a little commercial break here? We don't actually call them three day uh, winding up notices in Yulong Kai. We actually call them blue star letters. And the reason for that is there was a uh, quite complex court action um, regarding a defence to a, a three day winding up notice. Uh, and one of the parties involved was called Blue Star, and it actually was a McRoberts uh, court action. McRoberts are our parent company. So, so we feel that we've got the copyright to call that a Blue Star letter <laughs> rather than a three day winding up like notice. <laughs> um, OK, thank you very uh, much, Denise. That was very helpful. Thank you, Stephen.